in the training room of Clark County Fire District 6. In the back of the station, through a side door, there lurks... I'm going to shop a horse. Well, sort of. For paramedic Mike Hollingsworth, it's more like a little shop of make-believe horrors. In this case, it's called moulage training. So these are made in advance bullet holes. So they will be secured to wherever you want them. Uh -huh. And then this gets blended away. And then you put on stage blood. And next thing you know, you have a bullet hole. Before you draw the conclusion that Mike indeed does have a couple of holes in his head, a brief explanation. What Mike is teaching Captain Eric Simica is how to prepare the fake victims used in disaster training drills. You want clear, blood, and uh, skin tone. Now you Using their own arms for practice, they start with abrasions. First up, skin tone. And we're going to take the palette. And you're going to use the same stuff I am. You're just going to run a bead, and then you're going to smear it. Then the glue. Now, as this thing is setting up, you can take your comb, and you can just rake the comb one direction, and then rake it across 90 degrees. It's creating um, skin that is textured. textured, so it looks more like a rash. So now we're going to put a little of the red blood on the palette. And now when we smear this on here, you can see how the texture starts coming alive. But what wound would be complete without a little road rash? So now what you're going to do is you're just going to pick up some of this, not a whole lot, and you're going to bring this, drag this through. So what you do now is you can bring out some of that redness and, and depth to it. There's a reason that Mike, a veteran paramedic with decades of experience, is teaching Eric all of this now. Well, I know it's a secret, but I'm leaving in nine days. Um, and so the idea is, is that as the training captain, he can learn this techniques and skills to uh, better prepare our first responders for some emergencies that they may face with a little realism. If you're in trouble, you do not need a paramedic who takes one look at your injuries and freaks out. And sometimes the gore is hiding more serious injuries. New paramedics, or new EMTs for that example, get attracted to the gore. And that's not necessarily the life-threatening stuff. So if you, see, if you see blood, you go to blood. But the reality is you may need to go to airway rather than the blood. From abrasions, they went to burns. I thought maybe some of you would not want to see that in great detail. Playing with makeup, correct. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> then volunteer coordinator Merrill Thompson walked in and quickly became a gunshot okay, victim. So it was a decision that Merrill would soon regret. Oh. During the course of a 41-year career, a paramedic learns a lot of highly specialized skills. So it's a great help when he can pass along some of that knowledge, even though the student is occasionally a smarty pants. He's a master. <laughs> he is careful, a master. careful. Oh, there's going to be an end to that. A wealth full of knowledge and, yeah. and uh, stuff. They ran out of time on this day to do chemical burns and lacerations and a few other maladies. But besides well, passing on valuable skills, well, normally you don't most importantly, no paramedics were harmed in the making of these wounds. 